product development at Saab has always meant an exhaustive pursuit of safety, performance, and reliability through every means possible. But sometimes you have to go outside the lab for results. In 1986, Saab came to Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama with three standard Saab 9000s. When they left, they had completed 100,000 kilometers non-stop and won no less than 21 international records and two world records. October 1996, 10 years later, and Saab is back at Talladega with standard 900s and a contingent of 120 guest journalist drivers from around the world to challenge their previous records. Legendary rally champion Eric Carlson tells us why. The first reason was we'd like to have this 10-year jubilee. You know we were at 86 and put a lot of records, even world speed record, around here. And now we like to do with our new Saab 900 to show people as that. Also a very sporty car and it lasts around here as long as we can last here. The project began with the random selection of cars from the Saab assembly line in Trollhattan, Sweden. Jochen Janfers with the FIA confirms the selection and seals the car's major components to certify that they are production cars. The next stop is Germany at the Hockenheim Ring, one of many training areas around the world where journalists who will be doing the bulk of the driving in Talladega are acquainted with high-speed driving in the Saab 900. This challenging track provides an excellent preview of the 900's handling characteristics. Finally, the team arrives at Talladega, the 2.6-mile, 4.2-kilometer super speedway that will be home to the 900 for eight long days and nights. Final checking gets underway as the six 900s, turbos, V6s, and 2.0-liter four-cylinder cars are put through their paces. Standard except for the roll cage and six-point safety belt required by FIA rules, all cars prove ready for the challenge. The track, however, is another story. Badly in need of repaving, last done in 1979, it will be a force to contend with this time. Simo Lampinen, in charge of driver training, describes the challenge of finding a good line. On this track in Talladega, there are really a couple of different ways to to go round a very fast lap. Either you drive up on the banking or you drive down. Now it's going 150 mile an hour, absolutely flat out maximum. Here I go next to the wall on the top, which will go nicely and, and on a very, very even piece of track. And then down to, towards the yellow line, and then I'll let it slide out again, approaching the grandstand. One. At dawn on October 16th, the challenge officially begins. With both professional drivers and journalists at the wheel, speed and distance records are broken immediately, as the 900s prove faster than even... Team leader Bo Swanner sums up the first day's results. They has been successful so far. We have uh, uh, beaten all the records we could beat. That, that means a total of 33 records. We have uh, set 22 new records and beaten 11 old records. And that is um, more than we could expect. That's very good. One of the cars are driven by our own people and the other five cars, they are driven by guest drivers. That is the journalist that we have been inviting here. And I'm very impressed with that performance. And the word is spread as journalists tell their story. Welcome to Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. Also, it was a wonderful feeling to go to the sun in the sun. This is a very hearty welcome from the Talladega Speedway in Alabama. So, let's go to Victory Lane. 
As drivers, they themselves hold these endurance records. As evening falls, the two turbo cars continue their non-stop runs into the night. With the arrival of the next group of journalists, the toll of the difficult conditions begins to show. Pea-sized stones from the degenerating track surface are causing damage to the radiators at these constant high speeds. One radiator must be quickly changed, but a solution is improvised by the mechanics. A simple wire frame keeps the stones from hitting the radiator surface. As night falls, so do records set just days earlier. But rain is predicted overnight. And as was shown 10 years earlier, that can make a big difference. In the pre-dawn hours of October 18th, the violent storm moves in. Although the race has been slowed as a precaution, misfortune strikes when a strong gust of wind forces the number two car into the wall. Driver Herman Rundstrom is uninjured but the race is temporarily halted by NASCAR until conditions improve. I uh, feel very safe to drive a Saab, and uh, I think this is a confirmation about that. Also, if something unusual or some unexpected happens. Car number two is out of the race, but performed as designed in the accident and is added to the safety exhibit as a demonstration of real-life crash protection. As the race is restarted, records are still being broken in the wet. Henny Hems, a journalist from Holland, improves on the one-hour time set earlier in the week by a Saab professional driver. The sun returns and more milestones are reached. In maintaining the standard Saab service plan, a 20,000-mile service is performed on the number one car in just over two minutes. Oil is changed. Spark plugs replaced. And the car is back on the track. True to form, the journalists had a lot to say about their experiences. Even in the really tight turns, when you're completely flat out, it stays very, very stable, very calm. Um, and if you do make a mistake, it's quite forgiving. Uh, good, easy car to drive, certainly. The car that I've driven, I've driven extremely hard, and uh, they felt absolutely great. And the turbo I was driving earlier was pulling 150 miles an hour indicated. And, uh, with no big drama. It was, uh, it was an interesting motor car and really good fun. It's very enjoyable for me to drive here. It's for me, they were fantastic. Um, Saab has always had a very good reputation of being building very good, reliable motor cars, and the fact that they can come here and run these cars for so long completely reliably, I think just confirms everything that we've always suspected about Saab. Once again, rain is predicted overnight, and clouds move in. Pit manager Kent Johansson is ready. We are uh, going to use new tires that is going to get real wet. Uh, as the last way out, we're going to use full threaded tires. We are prepared for it, and if the worst comes to if we have really have bad weather, then we're going to recommend that we're going to stop the race for a while. So we don't, we won't take any risk. It's not so slippery on the track. It's, you can't see anything. That's the big problem. As day breaks, the times are still on schedule and all has run smoothly. Through all the posting and breaking of records, no one has lost sight of the greatest achievement of this challenge, the 25,000 mile mark established in 1986 with the 9,000s. As this point is neared, anticipation builds. On October 23rd, Saab 900 Turbo No. 1 crosses the line to set a new international record with an average speed of 140.709 miles per hour. In total, Saab has set some 40 new records for speed and endurance, reinforcing
journalists, all the guests we have had here, uh, all the pit crew, everybody. I mean, can't mention them all, but we all was a real great team. I'm happy for it. And we have a damn good product. As the event concludes, FIA inspectors certify that all the cars are exactly as they were when they left the factory. Yeah, that looks good. The cars and drivers get a well-deserved rest after traveling the total equivalent of 100,000 miles, averaging over 120 miles per hour, while performing flawlessly. Thank you very much to all of you in driving and all who have helped us with families and everything from Caladega. And I hope we can see you again in the near future. Thank you.